Welcome back to the Florida Gridiron Report right here on the Varsity Sports Network, April 13th. We got a new show, and I brought along a friend, Andy Villamarza from the Tampa Bay Beacon and Suncoast News. Andy, welcome back to the Florida Gridiron Report. Dan, thank you for having me. As always, it's always great talking football with you. I'll tell you what, buddy, we've got about two weeks before we kick off the spring football season, and we're still hearing about coaches' turnovers. Yeah, we got a couple. Uh, the revelations coming out of Lake Gibson with Coach Barfield. I mean, that's some really big news uh, right there. And then we got Trey Fawn out of Land Lakes suddenly resigning, citing uh, it's time. But, I mean, two weeks before spring ball, there's got to be more to it. So a couple of coaching changes that really, I think, kind of shook up the high school circuit in terms of you open up Twitter and you're like, I can't believe that. Like, yeah. what's going on? Yeah, and talking about it's tough enough having a coach's search, but to know that you're on the clock, you almost immediately have to hire within. It's very difficult to change a culture with that much going on. But, hey, we got a great show tonight. I've got a great interview with Lake Highland Preps head coach uh, Ben Bullock. They won the state championship last year with the SSAC, and then you and I are going to have a sit down with Coach Greg Miller, the new head coach at River Ridge High School. Guys, you're watching a Florida Grin Report right here on the Varsity Sports Network. And Andy and I will be back right after these messages. It's time to grow a little wildflower. So don't you worry now. There's no need to. We're often asked, what's more important in retirement, having a great plan or working with a great advisor? The answer is that both are vitally important to your retirement success. Retirement planning is not just a one and done. Even the best plans will need to be adjusted. That's exactly why we need an experienced advisor to guide you on your journey. How confident are you? Call us today for a second opinion. All right, welcome back to the Florida Grid on Report right here on the Varsity Sports Network. I'm Dan LaForest. Now being joined, Coach Ben Bullock from the Lake Highland Prep Highlanders. Coach, welcome to the Florida Grid on Report. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Dan. I appreciate it. Honor hey, to let's be here. give homage, man. You guys were the 2021 SSAC State Champions. Tell us about that team and what last, last season meant to not only your players, but also the community around Lake Highland Prep. Yeah, I mean, for the for the community standpoint, start with that. It was it was it was there was so much school spirit throughout the year. I mean, it was exciting to see the fan base that we had, the student section, our, our players engaging with them, and and the excitement that was going around campus was uh, was electric. And it, it's great for our players and our coaches. And we had a great group of players this year, uh, great coaching staff, and um, you know, we had 13 seniors this year that have been building um, and really improving over these last couple of years. And we and we've been doing this throughout a time period in in their lives that have been. It's been difficult. It's been a difficult couple of years with everything going on in the world um, with the pandemic. And, and um, you know, our guys didn't use that as an excuse. They made sure they tried to get the most out of each day, whether we were home or at school or whatever was being asked them to do. And they continued to improve as student athletes. And, and um, they really gelled well together. This was a really close-knit team um, that worked together well. They were good teammates. Um, you know, they, they pushed each other, but also made sure that they were all focused on, on the mission. And they did a great job. And like I said, they really found ways to not make excuses for what we had to go through over the last couple of years and, and still found ways to improve, uh, become a better team, become better teammates. And, and we really saw the result of that this past year throughout the 2021 season as, as they, they worked together towards the, you know, the goal of winning a championship. And, and they did, and they got to see the, the fruition of their, their hard work. And, and it's really great to see kids, you know, teenagers really get to see, what happens when you put that kind of time and effort into something and also do it together and really build that team um, chemistry that we had over last year and, and get something out of it in a championship. It's, it was unbelievable to see. 
you know, and everybody was able to watch that state championship game live on varsity sports network. And I tell you what a game 14 to 13 over Mount Dora Christian. It was exciting to watch. What was it like on the sideline? Oh, it was, it was, <laughs> listen, if you bought a ticket to go to it, you got every, every dollar's worth of that, that game. But on the sideline, it was, you know, we wanted to make sure we were, we we're doing everything we could to put our kids in the right position. You know, as coaches, we, it, it's gut wrenching at times because you want to make sure you're doing all the right things for your kids and, and, and putting them in the right position to be successful. And, um, and, but you're also playing against a very good team too. It was two very good teams. You know, they're getting coached well too over there. Um, so again, every, Every call was, you know, you're, you're thinking about every one of them. You're scrutinizing over the weeks leading up to that game. You're, you're thinking about every possible scenario and, and really trying to put your, uh, your team in the best position possible. So it was, it was, it was exciting. I mean, it was a great crowd. Both, both uh, fan bases came out and it was, it was what a championship game should be like. It was tight. Every, it seemed like every play was, was a huge play in the game, didn't matter what it was. And, and it seemed like everything was hanging on, on the next play. So it was exciting. No doubt about it. You know, and Coach Mike Kent, you mentioned over at Mount Door Christian Academy, has a great program set over there. And right now, it looks like you guys are the two front runners to be favorites to so possibly head back to that championship game here in 2022. You know, I know we're getting ready for spring ball. Let's talk about your team getting ready, your your workouts, uh, your workout uh, programs that you've been going on. Uh, I know there's a lot of flag programs going on. What are you guys doing right now to get ready for spring ball here in about two weeks? We're doing a lot of things, um, you know, right now as a coaching staff, we meet on a weekly basis to make sure we're getting on the same page. We all, we usually pick out a different theme each week. And we, we talk about whether it's offense, defense, special teams, personnel, practice. Um, we're picking out a topic each week to make sure we're going through um, and really kind of find, you know, taking a fine uh, tooth comb to everything in the program and really scrutinizing it to make sure we're on the right track and, and on the same page for, for spring practice. From a player standpoint, we're, we're big on, second sport athletes. Um, I know that's not a huge common, you know, it's becoming a minority nowadays, but we have a lot of players that run track, that play lacrosse, that play baseball, that just finished up a very long basketball season for us with our basketball team is phenomenal. Uh, we've got some wrestlers. Um, like I said, we've got a lot of guys and, and any guys that are not involved in those spring sports are with me with our boys weightlifting team too and, and getting our workouts in too. So it's been having those guys find ways to become better athletes, uh, whether it's playing another sport or with with us in workouts and trying to become a better athlete as we lead up to spring practice. And as we get closer to spring practice, we'll start working on our digital installs, sending out our install packets, whether it's playbooks or different things we want to teach the guys through our huddle and, and different um, online platforms. And then we'll start meeting and then we'll get into, uh, you know, spring practice. So it's an exciting time, but we really wanted to, we really do emphasize in the off season that, that if you're not playing another sport that you're with us, you know, becoming a better athlete, uh, developing you as a player, um, especially from when it comes to being, you know, the athletic standpoint, becoming a better athlete in the weight room uh, and also speed development. But a lot of our guys, like I said, are, are playing a variety of different sports throughout the winter and spring. And I really think that's an important piece of it because they come back fresh, ready to go, excited about football. But they, it's not like they haven't been doing anything. They, they've been cross training their bodies and, and they're ready to go when they get there. You know, coach, you mentioned something about having the cross, the, the cross sports, you know, having guys play. And that's not uncommon for a lot of private schools because you guys don't have large enrollments like the public schools. Sure. What are some of the more popular sports that your football players play out, outside of the football season? Oh, gosh. I mean, we, we really spread them across a variety of them. Um, in the springtime, you know, I think the biggest two are going to be probably, I think right now, we, our track team and then um, our track and field team and then. Uh, next would be probably the lacrosse team. Um, track and field's big. Um, you know, our bigger guys are in with me during the boys' weightlifting season and then out throwing uh, during track season. And then a lot of our, I mean, most of our track team is made up by our, our football skill players. Um, so that's a big one for us. We have a few baseball players. Um, we have a young baseball team this year. And some of our young players are on, on that varsity team. Coach uh, Sherva's doing a good job with that, with that program, very young. Um, but again, we, like I said, we got a variety of guys. We've got, you know, Daniel Williams is a nationally ranked wrestler for us. Um, you know, Makai Campbell, who graduated for us, he's going to graduate this year. He's not coming back next year, but he was on our, you know, final four basketball team this past year. So we do have a wide, wide variety of, of sports that our guys play in the off season. Um, but I'd say probably the biggest two in the springtime would be our track and field team and, and lacrosse. You know, in the SSAC, we're the official broadcast company for the Sunshine State Athletic Conference. So, I know we're looking at getting a game or two with you guys during the regular season on VSN and definitely we'll have that state championship game 
right here in November on Varsity Sports Network. Coach, before we go to break, let's talk a little bit about your coaching staff. Um, you know, any, any good coach has a solid coaching staff around him. Uh, how long has your coaching staff been together? We've really been together for a few years now. Um, you know, Coach Austin, our defense coordinator, now has been there four years. Um, you know, Coach Miller, our, our office line, defense line coach, um, has been there five years I've been there. Um, we, a lot of the guys have been there for a few years now. Coach Ware has been there for three. Coach Collins has been there for, for five, really. Um, you know, so there's been a lot of, a lot of continuity over the last few years of, of keeping the same staff, uh, especially throughout, like I said, it's, it's been very turbulent times for everybody um, with the last two years. So being able to kind of keep the same staff together uh, throughout that time has been extremely beneficial for our kids. You know, Coach, we were talking off camera, and you've coached at Mount Dora and Ocoee. Is there any difference, really, in how you're coaching football at that private school level than you have in the public schools? Uh, there's, a, there's a little bit difference, but, like, it's still coaching teenage kids. I mean, it really – I mean, it, kids are kids. They're still 14, 18-year-olds. Um, a lot of them, you know, they might not tell you this, but they need the structure and, and, and the, the accountability and the discipline in the program to grow, um, and they want that. They, they'll probably never tell you that, but they, they thrive on They enjoy and having a, a program that's – organized well run helps them not have to worry about you know when's practice going to happen when's this going to happen they got enough you know turbulence in in their in their society nowadays as it is with social media and all the different things that they have to they have to deal with on their daily basis we want to make sure that football is a place where they can grow and obviously become a better football player but become a better student athlete at the same time too so it's um you know it's it's something that i think is it's not different from where you are, I think, you know, each community has their differences. Um, but I think also too, when it comes down to it, they're still teenage kids and they, they still need some great role models to make sure that they're on the right track to becoming great citizens. All right, guys, we're going to go to break. When we come back, we're going to get to know coach Ben Bullock just a little bit better. You're watching the Florida grid on report right here on the varsity sports network. And we'll be back right after these messages. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Varsity Sports Network. Get out here, beautiful. Oh, sure, she did right at the top of the sixth. Did you try? Jabari finds a little sleep. He's gone. Hey, football really gives these head coaches. This is the high school scoreboard show right here on Varsity Sports Network. Florida Grid on report right here on the Varsity Sports Network, and we'll be back right after these messages. All right, welcome back to the Florida Grid on report right here on the Varsity Sports Network. I'm Dan LaForest. This is Coach Ben Bullock of Lake Highland Prep. Coach, you're going into your sixth year at Lake Highland Prep, but a lot of people don't know this about you. You're not a Florida boy. You actually grew up in New York. Yeah, no, I... Uh... I spent a lot, like, a lot of my life in New York. I, I've only been in Florida for about 10 years now. Uh, I got here in 2012. I'll give you that uh, quick story first. So um, I was spending, I spent about nine years, almost 10 years in college football before I moved to Florida. So I was in uh, some smaller division three schools in, in, in the Northeast and spent about nine, nine and a half years in college football. I was trying to be a cliche college coach. Like I moved up the ranks, became a coordinator and was trying to find the next gig and, and, you know, the whole thing that goes along with, you know, recruiting everything else that goes along with being a college coach. And for the last two and a half years that I was in college football, my wife was actually living here in Orlando, teaching down here, had some family down here. So I was the cliche college coach. I was flying back and forth. I'd go recruit Long Island, New York city, New Jersey. I jump a plane on, on JFK. I fly down here, see here, fly back up to recruit. And it just, you know, after a few years of doing that, um, and kind of the state of where we're at and some of the college I was at, it was just, it was kind of taking its toll a little bit on us. And, uh, 
you know, every time I made a phone call down here about some open positions in Florida, I, I always got a, a phone call back. There was a lot of availability, a lot of schools looking for coaches and, and, and really a lot of growth here in the central Florida area. Um, we were building schools, you know, a lot of things were happening at that time and still are obviously are happening now. Um, a ton of growth. So I was fortunate. I, I interviewed at a bunch of places. Um, you know, I even interviewed for an assistant job at one point there in 2011, 2012 with guys like Andy Johnson and, and Coach Hederick there at, at Bishop Moore and uh, really settled on because of teaching positions and open and open spots. Uh, Coach Grabowski at Mount Dora uh, at the time in, in uh, the summer of 2012 gave me a job there and and I packed everything up in July and had it on town in the car. And, and here we are ever since 10 years later. So and the yeah, irony I, there is Coach Hedrick actually played at Mount Dora. Yes. Yeah. No, we talk about it all the time because when I, uh, when I became the head coach at Mount Dora, he'd always, him and I would joke back and forth about that. And he was an alum and he was expecting, you know, maybe a, a uh, you know, Jersey hanging ceremony or something for him. And, you know, we joke about that. It's always good. And those are, those are the fun things about the the coach community here in central Florida is being able to have those conversations, have some fun with, you know, compete hard against each other, really coach hard against each other, but also, you know, have some fun with it too, especially during clinic season, you know, get to see each other and, and talk some ball and, and really tell some stories and, and have some fun with it. But that was kind of the quick version, how, you know, that, that couple of years leading up to 2012, how I got to Florida, but, and then now I've been in Florida now here for, for 10 years. Um, I was at Mount Dora for three years, had a great run. Uh, you know, that last year we were there at, as the head coach, I was eight and two. Uh, we, uh, we did a great job, played a really tough Mount, Mount uh, excuse me, Mar- Marinana team there in the, in the first round of the playoffs. And then moved on to Kobe in 2015 and 16, um, had back-to-back winning seasons there. Really, our kids did a great job revitalizing that program uh, and, and bringing it to a point where we won the district title in 2016 and, and made the only school, you know, only playoff appearance in school history then. Um, then moved to, you know, to Lake Highland in 2017. I've been there for, like I said, the last five years and going to our six and excited about uh, the 2022 season, you know, getting the start, you know, like I tell the guys, even though we're out some guys, you know, holding over or coming back from that, that 2021, uh, that team, it's a new team and we got to build a new team. We got to build a new chemistry. We got to build, you know, figure out who we are and who we're going to be. And uh, it's like starting all over again. It's a new chapter in a book. And, and we've got to really try to figure out who we are here in spring practice and, and really develop ourselves on a daily basis and worry about getting better each day. Um, the schedule will be here in the fall. We've got to worry about how we're we're going to take care of business each day to get better. So. And hopefully repeat as state champions. Let's talk a little bit about your playing days up in New York. What was it like being Ben Bullock, the football player in your high school days? Yeah, listen, yeah, average. Um, no, <laughs> but like, uh, you know, we uh, I grew up in a place uh, just about 45 minutes south of, of Syracuse. So I was a big Syracuse fan growing up. I get to see Don McPherson and Don McNabb. And like, I was a, a huge Syracuse fan growing up as a kid. My parents had season tickets and we were, we were diehard orange fans. Um, typical upstate New York people, you know, during basketball season, it's, it's the basketball team in Syracuse. And at that time, football wise, I mean, when we, when it was the McNabb era, it was, it was electric. Um, it was a lot of fun being a part of that um, in that area. So I grew up right outside of, of Binghamton, New York, in a, a little town called Maine. It's two schools put together. It's Maine and end well and they put them together and it's made end well high school um right now it's one of the top top teams in new york state year in year out football wise um in the 90s we were not that way um we really had kind of been a team that was more of a soccer school some other different sports were good we we're never really great at football um we got a new coach in 96 coach russ and um that's really where things started to turn around he had taken another school to prominence uh, for about 30, 40 years. He retired from that school and then took over our our football program in retirement. And uh, when he did, it was like a big shot in the arm for the program Um, to the point where in 98, we got to our first district, um, what would be called districts here, but sectional championship in in New York. And then our first playoff appearance in the state tournament ever. Uh, Ended up going to the final four that year. And that really kind of sprung the program forward. Um, like I told you off camera a little bit earlier, 2004 was their first state title. Then they won, I believe, four, four straight, I think in 13, 14, 15, 16. Um, and now are perennial power in your state. They just won a state title again this past year in 2021. Um, they were on ESPN at one point with, um, with one of the longer winning streaks in, in the history of, of, of the country. I think it was at 60 some odd games. It was only second to De La Salle's big, you know, long streak. 
but they had the second longest streak uh, wins. I think that ended in 2015. Um, there were also, gosh, we had the World Series, uh, literally World Series champions a couple of years back. Um, so it's a, it's a school now that's become a prominent, you know, very good academic school, but also very good athletic school in New York State, too. So now you weren't um, a guy who really played a position either. You kind of played around the ball a little bit. You played a little bit of running back, defensive end. Yeah. So, you know, you kind of had to be have you were kind of a multi purpose guy, weren't you? Yeah, we did a lot of different things. I was kind of, you know, I was running back at certain things with with our offense and, and kind of a slot, you know, in our offense. Then, you know, go over and play defense. We were a typical 3-4 defense, so I played some of that that hybrid position at the outside linebacker spot. And really, as I got into playing Division three football um, at Brockport State, right outside of Rochester, um, at Brockport, started out as, a, as an outside linebacker, but really turned into a running back and kind of our single back in certain sets and H back in other sets. And you know, it was, uh, you know, just being able to be multiple. Um, and that's really when the game was starting to get that way too, where you really had to have guys that could do some different things at different positions. The game was no longer becoming just, you know, this kind of guy could only play this position or, you know, this type of player can only play this spot. It really was starting to become the, the type of football you kind of see today where you start to see guys with multiple positions, hybrids, you know, things like that. When was that one moment where you were like, the light bulb went off and said, you know what, I want to coach football. You know, for me, I think, you know, I think it kind of, I don't think it was ever one light bulb. I think it kind of started when I was young. My dad was my first coach and, and started, he really started our youth program in the, in the town I grew up in. There was never one for us. We always had to travel to another city to, uh, to, to play youth football. So we really started that program in our, in our town. And now it's become a huge thing in, in our area. Um, and really was the first one. He kind of traveled with me up into middle school football um, and then let me kind of go into high school on my own. He stayed at middle school football, kept coaching at that level, really liked that age group and let me kind of go off on my own. But really when I was younger, I really, I really liked being around it. I really liked the strategic part of the game. I love being around the game. Um, I like the, 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 the different factors and variables of the game. You got 11 guys versus 11 guys in a huge field and trying to figure out how you're going to advance the football or how you're going to stop somebody. Just the strategic, you know, battle back and forth between coaches and, and the players be able to be that branch of, of the coach on the field um, really intrigued me. And as I got into high school and, and really when I started to leave college football and was going to graduate, um, my high school coach was great about really being a mentor for me. Even though I've been gone from high school football over the last four years, we really maintain a great relationship during my college playing days. And then as I thought, thought about becoming a graduate assistant and kind of making this a, a job, you know, a career, he was great and really did everything he could to try to help me and make sure that that was something I wanted to do. He would take me to clinics. He would, you know, he wouldn't, I wouldn't have to worry about a hotel. He let me crash in this hotel at a clinic and, and go listen to the guy speak. Um, you know, really took me around the places and meet people. He'd been around the game for, for 40 plus years and, and known a lot of these, you know, bigger name coaches and let me tag around with him and see them and go visit places and visit colleges and go to spring practices and really kind of took me by the hand. It was my mentor for, my first few years of, of, of being a graduate assistant in college and being an intern, where I really kind of got a chance to, to really see the, the profession and learn the profession and kind of be, you know, for lack of a better term, maybe an apprentice. Um, and I don't think everybody gets that. And I was very lucky and very fortunate to have a guy that was willing to take that time away from, you know, his family and, and everything else going on to be my mentor, and really kind of, you know, be, you know, you know, that, that coaching figure for me to kind kind of put me into the profession and you know I've been in ever since I was a graduate assistant you know slash intern in 2003 um and I've been coaching ever since so um like I said I was in college football for about nine and a half years before I came to Florida and, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that um you know coach Russ helped me help me into you know really jump start my profession and really jump start me into coaching um you know, I got my first coordinating job. I became a defense coordinator at a college right outside of Cooperstown, where the Baseball Hall of Fame is, um, at Hartwick College. Got that coordinating job, and he was so stinking excited that I became a college coordinator. I uh, was up at, at, at uh, you know, training camp that year. My first training camp was there all the time, was part of it. And unfortunately, he got he got very ill. Um, and by December, he was no longer with us. So he's a guy I think about a lot. He, you know, when I have to think about how I'm going to do things and, and some of the things that he would have done and kind of reach back to some of those those um, lessons and some of those times he, you know, him and I would just sit by his pool and talk football um, it was, a, you know, a, a resource that, you know, was priceless to me. So it was a really big part of it. Coach, one last question. 
the recruiting process has changed now in high school, getting these kids to college. Sure. Um, what are some of the things you're telling your kids? Because, you know, the way you and I recruited in high school has changed drastically. Like everything's changed drastically really in the last one to two years. What are some of the things you're trying to get your kids to realize to stay grounded in the recruiting process? Well, I think the, the first thing, and I don't think this has changed at all over, over these times periods, you've got to become a better version of you every day. Um, you got to become a better student. You got to become a better athlete every day and become the best version of you. And that's going to be a, a player that somebody's going to want to recruit. Um, if you're worried about a lot of the extras on the side and not taking care of, of business when it comes to your academics, um, how, how great of a teammate you are, how great you are to the people around you in your school, school to community, your character, and then also obviously becoming a better athlete and a better football player, being a, a student of the game, doing the extra things, doing, going above and beyond, especially if you, if you want to be a, a, a college level player, you really got to understand the game better. And it's only going to give you more of an edge as a high school player and as a college player. Um, so I really think it starts with that, being able to make sure obviously you're taking care of business when it comes to your your academics, your, your character, and obviously becoming a better football player on a daily basis. And if you focus on that constant daily improvement, you'd be amazed how much different you're going to be in a month, how much different you're going to be in six months, and how much you're, you're going to be different in a year. And really becoming somebody who wants to be recruited, because really think about it, it's it's almost like you're selling a product. Like if you've got a really good product, if you've turned yourself into a great student athlete, and your coaches and your and your parents and everybody around you can help you with that, but ultimately you've got to do that. Um, there, a lot of that is on you to, to make sure that you're going about that on a daily basis. If you truly want this to be something that uh, is, is where you're going to go. Yeah. So I think that's a huge thing. And that's something that is never going to change. I think that's something that's got to be a part of it. And then now it's, you know, it's making sure that, um, you know, as coaches and players that we're getting your name out there and getting you exposure as much as we can and being open to a variety of opportunities, um, no matter what that looks like and, and making sure we cast a wide net um, getting that that player's huddle profile, which we do, and get that in front of all the coaches that we can in the nation. Um, you know, we live in a great age where you can use this technology and social media for good things. I mean, yeah. we we it gets knocked a lot. Social media and technology gets knocked a lot for some of the negative things. And trust me, there is a lot of negative things out there. And unfortunately, people use this power, um, this platform for for negative things. Where let's use this this power of, of technology and this platform that we have now that we never had decades ago yeah. and use it for something good, which would be the promotion of, of our players that are doing such great things. Let's promote what they're doing in the classroom and, and on the field and try to help them get to where they want to go. All right, guys, that's coach Ben Bullock from Lake Highland prep. You're watching a Florida Grunner report right here on the varsity sports network. And we'll be back right after these messages. It's time to grow up, little wildflower, so don't you worry now, there's no need to hurry now, it's been a long, long day, and you can shine now. Welcome back to the Florida Gridiron Report right here on the Varsity Sports Network. I'm Dan LaForest. That's Andy Villamarzo. And now being joined by the new head coach at River Ridge High School, Greg Miller. Coach, welcome to the FGR. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, I tell you what, you know, you've, you've, you've been wearing that, that hat now for a few weeks now. Get ready to head into, into your spring season. Tell us about the excitement that's growing around River Ridge High School right now with the 2022 football program. Yeah, so, you know, I, I tell the kids all uh, I tell the kids this all the time. You know, I, I kind of put a little pressure on them as me coming in as a new head coach. And, uh, you know, I did some research on the program, and I know that there's a strong foundation here. So, uh, you know, one of the things that I'm trying to do is kind of take this program to another level, and I want to push these kids to a level that maybe they haven't been pushed before. So I'm putting a lot of pressure on them right now. Uh, whether that be through Twitter or just, you know, through our workouts, or whatever, you know, I'm, I'm just putting it out there that I want this to be uh, an elite program in Pasco County. And I think we have the players. I think we have the, 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 uh, the structure. 
Um, you know, I definitely know I have the support right now from, uh, from the community and from our uh, administration uh, to allow me to kind of build and do the things that I want to do with this program. And so far, so good, man. These kids have responded really, really well. So, Coach, talk about the matchup that, I mean, I know you've heard about. We talked about it when we did the Twitter space a little bit ago. You got Mitchell over there in Trinity. And I know you've heard about the purple and gold clashing. Yeah. And just that atmosphere. Talk about what your thoughts are on that game and just like the kind of atmosphere you're expecting for that rivalry when the fall comes around. Yeah, I'm really, really excited to uh, get a chance to go and match up with them. You know, the, the, the school is, is, I think the schools are really like 10, 15 minutes apart, really. Uh, it's just right down the street. So I know that, uh, you know, we share kind of a border and kids and you know, I know a lot of these kids grow up playing uh, foul football in, in the youth league and they play sports year round uh, against each other. So there's a lot of competition there. Um, and so, you know, I'm just really, really excited uh, uh, just to see the atmosphere. You know, I love high school football and I love that type of atmosphere where you have two rival schools that are that close that, uh, that get a chance to compete against each other. And, uh, you know, you're really competing for bragging rights, man. There's nothing like that. Uh, in, in, in high school sports, when you, when you can get that in the high school football, man, it's, uh, that's unbelievable. So I'm now, really coach, looking forward to it. Now, Coach, you're, you're, you're kind of used to those rivalries, you know, coming from Lake Brantley High School where you were the yeah. defensive coordinator last few years. That rivalry between Lake Brantley and Lake Mary, you were part of a big one here in Central yeah. Florida. How do you prepare your team to mentally be prepared for those types of games? Yeah. Well, I think – all that stuff starts right now, man. And that starts with the culture of your program. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I'm trying to get these kids to understand is, you know, I want them to be able to, to have the mentality that they can play against anybody in the state of Florida. And, um, you know, so I start that early on. And it's just really just having the vision of, of, of being able to go out there and compete against the best of the best. You know, I want my kids competing in, in elite prospect camps so they can see the best of the best. And that's something that I started doing at Brantley. Uh, you know, I started taking our kids on, on the summer camp circuit and the kids got a chance to go up to some of these mega uh, mega elite camps and all this other stuff. And, you know, you got kids coming from Texas, from California, Louisiana, Georgia, Michigan, all over the place. So, um, you know, for them to get that competition one on one and then they bring that back uh, to our program, you know, they really feel uh, that they can go out and compete against anybody. So, you know, I'm going to do those things. You know, I'm going to mentally prepare them during the summer. I'm going to be tough. I'm a tough coach. And, uh, you know, I'm going to push them through the summer, through our summer workouts, uh, in the weight room, uh, on the field and conditioning. So everything we do, um, you know, by the time they get the game, time situation, you know, it, it, should, be, it should be cake for them. It should be easy for them, you know. And, and like I said, mentally, we're going to put in there that we can compete against anybody. Competing on Friday nights, Coach, for River Ridge in the past few years, they've always been around 30, 25 players on game nights uh, yeah. when I would cover them. Is playing with a smaller roster something that you kind of look towards having, or do you feel more comfortable kind of kind of boosting those numbers up a little bit? Because uh, in all my years covering River Ridge, it was, it was almost like 25, 30 guys would be a lot for River Ridge team. Yeah. Should we expect more guys on the sidelines on Friday nights? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I you know, I think one of the biggest issues with those numbers uh, were that uh, Coach Benjamin, the previous coach before me, he wasn't on campus. So, you know, it's, it's difficult to go out and recruit your kids from the, from the hallways, uh, pull them from the basketball courts and pull them from baseball and that type of thing. So, I've been able to talk to a lot of kids uh, since I've been on campus. You know, I'm in our lunch rooms every day talking to kids. I'm just developing relationships. You know, I, I go to the gym classes. I see kids shooting the basketball around. You know, I've, I've spoken to a bunch of kids who I see, you know, they can get up and dunk. I'm like, you know, come on, let's go play football. You know, <laughs> use, some, use some of the athleticism. So, you know, so far, and again, we're talking about teenage high school kids, but so far, you know, knock on wood, hopefully when we start, you know, I'm looking at my numbers should be anywhere between 50 to 60 right now. And I have, I have, um, right now I have about 10 kids on track, eight to 10 kids on track. I got about four or five playing baseball and I got a couple of wrestlers coming out as well. So, uh, as long as they, they hold true to their word, uh, when they come out, we should be around 50 to 60 kids, which for me, I think that's a, that, that's a good number for the spring. 
And then I think that uh, if we can have some some success this spring and the word starts getting out a little bit, um, excuse me, I think our numbers could go up. I, I know our eighth grade class coming in, that's a big class. And uh, our, our sixth grade class is going to be a pretty big class as well. So, you know, I'm going to try to get with those kids very early on. Like now, I have a parent meeting coming up for our middle school in about two weeks. So, um, you know, we're going to try to get those kids on board. I'm doing some other things with the local PAL League. Uh, you know, we're going to connect with them. And uh, so we can, you know, kind of start getting some kids uh, uh, coming through our youth program and then into our middle school program and then eventually our high school program. So I'm doing a lot right now to try to uh, kind of build that pipeline for us so we can start to build those numbers back up. And, 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 and in my opinion, you no, know, it's going to be tough to really compete in the state with, with only having 25, 30 kids on the roster. So, you know, it's, 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 it's crucial that if, if this program wants to, wants to take the next step, we got to get those numbers up. Coach, it's always tough for a new new coach to come into a program and put together a coaching staff, especially a coach that, that had to move three or four counties over. Yeah. Tell us about your coaching staff and what excites you uh, about these guys as you head into that spring campaign, because you're right, everything comes down to pulling these guys together here in the next few weeks. Yeah. So, you know, when I, when first things first, uh, some of the coaches that I, that I do have on staff now came from networking, you know, and uh, everybody that I received uh, resumes from and everybody that I've spoken to about being on staff, the first thing that I spoke about wasn't the X's and the O's. It was about the relationships that they can build and how do you build those relationships with your players. Uh, I think that's one of the things that that, that kind of allowed me to have some success over at Lake Brantley uh, was that I was able to kind of develop those relationships and those kids really did buy into me and buy into the program and buy into what we were teaching them. And I think that before we can ask these kids to really go out in that field and do the things that we want them to do, you know, in the summer and in the weight room and the heat and all those things, uh, they have to believe in you first. So, you know, everybody that I spoke to uh, uh, that I received resumes from, you know, my first, you know, the first half of our conversation was all about just player development, relationship development. How can, <clears throat> excuse me, how can we develop these kids uh, 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 to be, uh, uh, Good, good football players and good leaders. And uh, with that, the football part will come. And then, you know, then I get into the football stuff. So I got, I got very blessed. Um, you know, I, I, my O-line coach, uh, he came from a, a local program where uh, the head coach was an O-line guy. So he didn't need him. So he kind of fell into my lap. And then, uh, you no, know, there are so, there, there were a bunch of coaching changes here in the county. So, um, you know, I, I just kind of called around and asked around and, you know, I wanted to know who would be good relationship guys and who would be good loyal guys uh, that could help this program develop. And I'm very, very much pleased with what I have right now. I, I think I got, you know, I got a good mixture of some guys that have some great experience. And then I got, you know, some younger guys who we can help develop and get them out. And I think that's my job as a head coach is try to get my, my, my coaches develop and get them out uh, to other programs, you know, so they can take over, you know, in leadership roles. Coach, talk a little bit about the, you know, a couple of weeks away from spring ball practice. Just talk about a little bit of the differences that you've already noticed with being out at seven on sevens, weight mm -hmm. training. I mean, do you feel like from central Florida now into Pasco County, there's some differences in terms of preparation heading into spring ball? Do you feel like the kids are kind of different or coaches? What are some of the things you've, you've noticed that different for you? Uh, well, right now, I, I know for my kids, I can't speak for the you know other kids you know throughout the county, but I know for my players they're very very competitive, and they want to win, man. They want to win in everything. Last week, you know, after uh, after we lifted, you know, I decided to do a three on three basketball tournament, you know, and uh, you know I said I wasn't going to get out there and do it, and, and you know we one of the teams needed one more player, so I said let me go out there. That was a mistake, but I went out there and did it. But <laughs> you know these kids are super duper competitive, man. And that's the, that's the one thing I love. Uh, sometimes, you know, we, we've done some 707s already, and sometimes the kids don't understand, uh, you know, uh, what I'm trying to do because they want to go, 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 go. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm trying to put in the offense here, and I want you to work on timing, and I want you to work on routes, and, you know, all these different types of things. And uh, the kids just want to go. They want to win. So, you know, that part is awesome. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, that's, that's, that's one of the hardest things with, you know, if you're coming into a program uh, is to change that culture and get kids to kind of buy into wanting to win and, and be competitive all the time. And these kids are just ultra competitive. 
So uh, that part I love. Um, you know, we're working on some of the athleticism and we're working on the weight room stuff. Some of the stuff I'm doing with these kids in the weight room uh, is different than what they've done in the past. And uh, I'm really focusing on, you know, I came in with a specific plan uh, and I had to kind of scrap it because, you know, our kids need to be more flexible and they need to have more foundational strength. So, you know, I spent the first, you know, for the most part, four to five weeks uh, since I've been here, just really kind of dealing with uh, foundational strength and, and, and flexibility. Uh, and then from there, you know, we're going to hit the summer and we're going to hit the weight room uh, much harder. And I think that will pay off in the long run uh, with the amount of time that I spent dealing with those things. So, um, you know, in the central Florida area, man, those kids are very competitive. They're very athletic. And, you know, a lot of those programs are, are you kids are playing football year round. So, you know, I want that not just from my high school program, but I want that from our youth league all the way on up. You know, I want the, I want the kids playing fall football and then uh, uh, flag football in the winter, spring football in the spring. And then, you know, we're going to be doing some things on our campus with our youth football programs and stuff like that. And I want them to be a part of that as well. So, you know, hopefully we are building a culture here where these kids from five all the way in up into high school and they, yeah. they, they're playing football. They love it. They're being competitive year round. And, and, you know, that's one of my major uh, my major goals, my plans coming in. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to get to know Coach Gregory Miller just a little bit better. You're watching the Florida Gridiron Report right here on the Varsity Sports Network, and we'll be back right after these messages. We're often asked, what's more important in retirement, having a great plan or working with a great advisor? The answer is that both are vitally important to your retirement success. Retirement planning is not just a one and done. Even the best plans will need to be adjusted. That's exactly why we need an experienced advisor to guide you on your journey. How confident are you? Call us today for a second opinion. All right, welcome back to the Florida Gridiron Report right here on the Varsity Sports Network. I'm Dan LaForest. That's Andy Villamarzo. And Coach Greg Miller, the new head coach at River Ridge High School. Coach, let's talk a little bit about your playing days. You know, you're not a Florida-born kid here. You moved down from up north. You played high school up in Pennsylvania. What were your fondest memories of playing high school ball? Well, my high school career was a little bit rocky. Because I, I bounced around to a couple of different schools, so uh, you know I started off in uh, in Howard County at Mount Hebron High School, and then um, my mom and my mom, well, it's a little bit misleading too, uh, Dan, because I I got family down here from in the, in the Florida area. I went to school down here for two years. I went to Oak Ridge actually my sophomore year in high school. Wow. Uh, Played a little running back. I tore my knee up. So I think um, who was over there at that time? At that time it was Johnny Love. And uh, 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 there was a kid that was in my class, Maxwell Joseph, a couple other kids. So uh, some pretty good football players back then, pretty good athletes. But uh, I ended up tearing my knee up, and my mom said, all right, you, know, you got to get back up here north. So uh, by that time, she had moved uh, close, a little bit closer to Baltimore City. So I ended up graduating from uh, Woodlawn High School. So that first year back was really kind of more of a rehab. Uh, you know, I had to wear that big old brace, and you know, I had reconstructive surgery, and you know, I was so young, so just trying to understand how to rehab and come back from that. And then my senior year, I had a pretty good – I was having a pretty good senior season and then uh, had a had an ankle injury, uh, had a high ankle sprain. So that put me out for a couple of weeks. And uh, so that really kind of – you know, back then we didn't have I – didn't, I didn't know much about the junior college level and the prep school and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I, I, I came down to UCF. Uh, that spring visited, uh, I came down to visit the school then and my grandfather lived down here. Uh, you know, I was, I was looking at possibly trying to walk on there and walk on at Temple and a couple of other schools I was looking at. I was looking at U Maryland, a couple of other schools. And then, um, you know, I decided to go to a smaller school, uh, thought that I would do better in a small environment and I wanted to kind of play right away. So, you know, I wanted to go to a place that I thought that I could, I can kind of step on the field as a freshman to get a little bit of playing time. And, uh, you know, Kings and a couple of the D3 schools kind of came through um, uh, with some interest. And, you know, I just kind of made my choice. So 
ended up being a great choice, man, because, you know, my freshman year, it was a little rough. We, uh, they played a lot of freshmen, uh, incoming freshmen. They did kind of changed how they were recruiting and they got out a little more, um, into uh, like a very good friend of mine. They, they went into Newark and picked him up as a running back. He ended up being one of the top running backs in Division Three. Um, you know, they picked me up and a couple other guys up. And uh, we really helped to kind of change that culture of that program. And, uh, you know, to the point where when I graduated there, we were one of the top schools in the country. And uh, we made it to the second round in the NCAA playoffs. And, you know, we took the number two team in the nation down to the final, final, final field goal, man. So, uh, you know, we really did change the culture on that. I got the only uh, conference championship in school history at King's College right now. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we did some really good things. I think for two years, I don't think that our defense gave up a 100-yard rusher in two years. You know, we were, you know, we just, everything kind of came together. So I, I have no regrets over my playing career. Talk a little bit about the recruiting process. Uh going to King's College, obviously, you know, in comparison to today's recruiting world, it's a lot of kind of social media networking, you know, they, they are just getting back to, you know, visiting high schools and, and showing up, but uh, talk about when you were being recruited, how that process went. Well, back in the nineties, we didn't have Twitter and social media and all that other good (laughs) stuff. So it was kind of, we were at the mercy of colleges that came in, um, you know, I didn't have a ton of, of guidance and support there. I did a lot on my own. Me and my uncle, we kind of, I remember going to my uncle's house. Uh, I spent a weekend at my uncle's house and uh, we kind of sat. And I remember he pulled out his camcorder and, you know, I sat down and he recorded me, uh, you know, just kind of a message that I was sending out to coaches. And, you know, we put a, we put my own highlight film together through mommy camp. So everything came from my mom's camera. So it was like all shaky and she was focused <laughs> in on me. and. You know, so things were a lot, a lot different back then in the nineties than it was uh, today in terms of recruiting. Hey, at least you got uh, to burn it on a CD. Mine was on VHS tap. <laughs> no, no, I, I wasn't, I, I wasn't on CD, man. That was on VHS. So that was, that was a couple of years before CDs really started to come out. But um, yeah, so my mom, my mom kind of recorded everything. She didn't really know what she was doing. And, you know, me and my uncle, we didn't know what we were doing. We were just splicing up the video, uh, the VHS tapes and, trying to make a highlight film and, you know, for whatever money I had, we got VHS, VHS, VHS tapes and we dubbed them and we sent them out. We mailed them out and we did that all in a weekend. So uh, that I do remember about the recruiting process. I went to go, you know, see a couple of schools, but uh, for me, um, you know, I didn't have a lot of money. So, you know, I came from a single family home and I didn't have somebody who could take me around to all of these schools. So, you know, I think that's why that uh, me as a coach right now, I take that so serious, the recruiting aspect of it so serious, because I understand what using football can do to get you your degree and change your life. And, uh, you know, what, what uh, at, at Brantley, you know, I kind of early on, I saw Andrew and Michael Harris, the twins, uh, the Harris twins as freshmen. And I built a relationship with their mom and, and understood that there was some, uh, some, some difficulties there, but I saw some great players. And I wanted to ensure that they didn't miss out on the opportunity, on the recruiting uh, opportunity. So, you know, I kind of took it upon myself to, to get them to where they needed to be. And last summer, we kind of, you know, we were all over the place. We were Texas A&M, UGA, UF, Miami, everywhere, you know, just to kind of build their uh, build their network and build their status. And now, you know, the two of the top 10 linebackers in the country right now, you know. So, you know, I take, I take what I do very serious in terms of the recruiting aspect. Uh, and in terms of trying to give these kids the support and make the right decisions that they need uh, to be successful and, and make the right decision for themselves. Coach, what was that aha moment for you where you decided you were going to dedicate your life coaching football? Yeah, so after college, I tried two years at pro. And, uh, you, know, I, 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 you know, I tried to get into some workouts with CFL and Arena League and uh, you know, I remember to the day, January 2005, man, my, my doctor came in. I was looking to try to sign with the, uh, the Philly Soul at the time uh, in the Arena League. And, uh, you know, I had to disclose my injuries and stuff. And I disclosed that I had the knee injury. So they wanted to go get an MRI checked out. And, you know, my doctor walked in uh, January 2005. He said, son, your career is over with. And that was tough for me because I, I was, you know, I was really starting. It was starting to click everything, you know, physically, mentally, everything about this game of football was starting to click. It was, you know, I was seeing things before it was, you know, it was happening. And then, um, you know, so I had to find another avenue. And 
I didn't know what that avenue was going to be. And I had a buddy of mine, actually, that same guy I was talking about, uh, the, the guy that came in freshman year with me to running back. Uh, he was coaching at a prep school uh, up, up, up in uh, Pennsylvania. And he said, you know what, why don't you come coach with me and just see if you like it. And I never really gave it a thought. You know, my, my, my plan was to take my business degree, start a business somewhere, start a consultant firm or something. I don't know, you know. Uh, and uh, so I got with him and, you know, we, 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 had some, we had some pretty good talent. And uh, I was able to kind of develop them guys. And I was like, all right, you know, I'm pretty good at this, you know. And then I came back for a second year. And, uh, you know, I had some other things going on at the time. I was, I was going to uh, grad school for my master's and doing some other stuff. So, I, again, I didn't take football coaching that serious. And then we came back the second year, and I, I just had a blast, man. I just had fun. And uh, from there on, man, I've been doing this 19 years, and not one day have I ever thought that this was – I've never called this a job. It's never been a job for me. I put in a lot of hours and I've done a lot uh, with the game, but it's just – it's always been fun. So – you know, I think after that second year, it kind of clicked. And then I got a chance to join uh, Lackawanna College, which is, you know, it's one of the top junior colleges in the country. And the head coach there, his name is Mark Duda. He's been around for a long, long time. And uh, he is a great, great mentor. And I, I, I got a chance to see how he developed uh, the, the, the kid that everybody else is willing to throw away, whether it was because, whether it was because of academics or behavior or whatever it was. And he, he, he changed those kids' lives uh, to the point where some of them now are in finance, some of them are police officers, some of them are teachers. And, you know, I look back and I say, what would they have been if it wasn't for his guidance and it wasn't for the structure of that program, that football program? And uh, from that, man, I was hooked. From that point on, I was hooked. You know, what, what we as coaches can do for these young people in terms of changing the course of their lives to me was unbelievable. And I saw that firsthand. You know, so and I saw how much he cared. You know, we had a kid who was a D tackle from uh, Delaware and uh, he had an opportunity to go to UF and he screwed that up because he screwed up on his grades. Next next year, coach had all of us tutoring the kids. He said, I would never and I remember him saying this. He said, I would never ha have a kid lose an opportunity for a scholarship again because of grades. And, you know, he got the whole coaching staff involved, man. And, and just to see that type of integration, man, and changing kids lives was just unbelievable to me. So was, I had a couple of aha moments, I guess. <laughs> Andy? Mm -hmm. And Coach, uh, let's talk about now. I mean, you've entered, uh, you know, your high school head coach. This is the uh, second time for you, you know. Just uh, talk about, I mean, you go from the aha moment, you, you know, find your niche uh, coaching football. I mean, when did, you, uh, when did you feel like you wanted to become a head coach? When was the kind of that first time you were like, you know what, I really want to become a head coach? Yeah, well, I mean, it was probably during that time at Lagoon. Like I said, I just saw the 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 I saw how important the leadership uh, of the head coach would be, and I owe I, I owe all that to Mark Duda, man. And how I am as a, how I try to pattern myself as a coach is is, is, is similar to him, uh, where you know he, he he's tough and fair, um, but you know he's not going to he's not going to allow the kids to not be successful, even if they don't know. You know, sometimes, you know, as young people, they don't know what they don't know. So he sees, you know, the potential in, in, in each one of these kids and he pushes them. And that whole program pushes those kids to be successful to the point now where they got a bunch of kids in the NFL now. Every year they're putting out kids in college, Division One, one AA, Division II. You know, it doesn't matter. Those kids are going to school for free and they're getting a college degree for free. And some of them are moving on uh, uh, to the professional level where they can really make some money. I know one player in particular, he's used, he used some of his money playing pro they get uh you know he went to culinary school and now he owns a bunch of restaurants and a couple you know in miami houston dc you know he's all over the place so um you know that was probably when i when i when i when i when it clicked and said that eventually i like to become a head coach and i like to be able to do these types of things for these young people you know coach real quick you, you said something a few seconds ago you don't know until you know and this is something that i use on a regular basis especially when it comes to head coaches. This is your second go around as a head coach. What did you not know that first time that you know now that, that you believe is going to help you the second time around? My leadership is going to be different. You know, um, I had a plan and my plan was, you know, coming in, opening a new school. I wanted to kind of set the tone very early on because I have a specific belief on how to play this game of football. You know, you got to be, you got to be disciplined. You got to be structured. 
and you got to play the game physical. And I think that I went into that with the wrong mindset where, you know, I said, we're gonna, I'm going to take this program on right now and I'm going to show this program that we need to be disciplined, structured, all that other good stuff, right? And I didn't incorporate my, my assistant coaches as much as I should have uh, and empower them. And one thing that I realized is that, you know, in, in the leadership role, you have to empower people to do what it is that you hire them to do. And uh, I didn't necessarily do that the first time around. I think I took, a, I, I took on a little too much and I stressed myself out uh, just because uh, I was trying to take on too much and then teaching and everything else. So this time around, you know, I'm relying on people a little bit more. I'm trying to empower people. You know, I got a, I got a great guy that's handling recruiting for me. Uh, you know, I got my, my son is down here. My oldest son is down here. So he's handling a lot of things for me. You know, I'm, I'm using our uh, digital uh, information technology uh, program that we have here on campus to handle some of the graphics and stuff. From, so I don't have to do everything on my own. Right. And now I can focus on setting the culture of our program and, and, and dealing with the, you know, the administrative stuff and raising the money and all that other good stuff and just developing relationships with the community as well. I tell you what, that is Coach Greg Miller, the new head coach at River Ridge High School. You're watching a Florida Gridiron Report right here on the Varsity Sports Network. Andy and I'll be back here in a few minutes with our final thoughts. Hello, my name is Frank Lavalio with Security Financial Management. For the last 35 years, we've been helping formulate tax-efficient retirement income plans. Many of our clients are extremely concerned with increasing federal debt and that taxes could go up significantly. Call today for your no obligation, complimentary consultation. We have the specific tools to help you develop your own tax efficient retirement income plan. All right, welcome back to the Florida Gridiron Report right here on the Varsity Sports Network. Dan LaForest, Andy Villamarzo. Andy, we had a great interview with Coach Ben Bullock over at Lake Highland Prep. State champions in 2021. Got to get to know Coach Bullock a little bit better as a man, as a former football player, and now the aspirations to take the Highlanders right back into the 2022 season searching for that 2022 state championship. And then, wow, what a great interview we had with Coach Greg Miller over at Riverdale, or at River Ridge High School, excuse me. Yeah, I mean, it was great getting to talk to Coach Miller about, you know, what his goals are for the River Ridge Royal Knights, and then getting to learn a little bit more about him as a, you know, in his former playing days, being at King's College, and when he played ball up in uh, Pennsylvania. I mean, those are things that I didn't really know about him, so it was good to get to know the man in charge of the Royal Knights this spring and heading into the fall. I tell you what, Andy, we've had a lot of exciting news here with Varsity Sports Network. For those who've been watching us on your cell phone and on your computers, we are now streaming on Roku and Apple TV. All you have to do is download Varsity Sports Network, go to your 247 channel, and you can watch us right on your TVs now or continue to watch us on your cell phone. We're looking at other streaming platforms here to be announced soon. And then we've got some huge news, huge news next week, right here on the Florida Grown Report, talking about next year, 2022, and what we have set up that you guys are going to be excited about from the panhandle down to Key West. Andy, got final thoughts? Uh, I'm excited about this news you got. I'm like, let's fast forward to next week. How oh, about that? <laughs> yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be mind-blowing, and I'm excited because I'm going to have Bobby Latmore, my partner with VSN. He's going to be on and a couple surprise guests. So, guys, you're watching a Florida Gridiron Report right here on the Varsity Sports Network, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>